So I'd like to go ahead and thank our sponsors, the Evergreen Community Development Initiative and Mobius, both of whom have helped make this conference possible, along with our other sponsors, all the great uh, people presenting, the people asking questions, everyone, but especially the people that sign large checks. So thank you, Mobius and ECDI. And so we're gonna jump into the presentations. Um, we do, I believe, have captioning for this. So I am going to drop that link into the chat. If you are having any issues following along the audio discussion, use this link. Our captioners have worked very hard and have been amazing throughout the conference. So. I also want everybody to direct some goodwill towards them. It is amazing having the captioning available. So I think Debbie wanted to discuss Dig a little bit. So why don't we start off with her? All right. Uh... Sorry, just checking out the settings. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, Can you see my screen? I cannot. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Okay. Did it pop up and ask you to select a screen from among it, the available ones? It did, and I said entire screen. Uh, okay, I'm not open to see your screen. There are occasionally times, folks, that <laughs> I wish I'd been a librarian back in, say, the turn of uh, the 19th to 20th century. Relatively few technology problems then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, how about if I... Share I'll tell you what. I will go ahead and do mine, and you can play with that and see if we can't sort it out. And... Don't worry about adding your screen to mine while I talk, while you test okay. it. <laughs> and we'll just roll ahead. Sounds good. Okay. So I kind of have two in one here that I'm going to talk about quickly. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to stump for assistance on some projects. And the first one I call Nuke the Web. Now, it's not the entirety of the internet, don't worry, because... Uh, one, that probably would not be very productive, and two, I don't want to go to prison. So when I talk about nuking the web, what I'm really talking about is our website. I don't know how often folks go to the Evergreen website these days, but it could really use some love. Um, it has been around for a long time. It has been WordPress. It has been updated. It has had plugins installed. It has had CSS tweaked. It has had discrete obscure changes made by people that aren't around anymore and probably don't remember what they did, even if they are. And it has ended up being a little dated looking, a little hard to find some things, and the back end could really use some attention. Uh, so yeah, I want to nuke our website and basically start over. As I said, we're using WordPress. It's kind of in the Wild West. The pro of the Wild West is it's good for content. We've very freely given people access to do content. And that's something I don't want to change. Uh, I don't want there to be gatekeeping on adding content to the website. 
But I do think the administration of it probably needs to be locked down a little bit. We don't need people freely changing uh, themes and plugins and stuff like that. And, and not that that's been a major problem, but it, it's a mess back there. Um, so my goal that I'd like to throw out to the community is that we nuke and rebuild it. And our timeline is that we have it done by the conference next year of 2022. So that gives us a soft date, but I mean, we're talking about basically April of next year, which I think is enough time to do this. So if we do this, we need to get organized in the next month. And if we have the interest in manpower, we'll kind of use the outreach committee as the umbrella that we do it under. My, now, my intentions are that we would stay with WordPress. I don't see a reason to leave WordPress. There's lots of great tools to help support it. Um, and we're not looking to reinvent the wheel, but we want it clean and we want a maintainable slate. Uh, the merchandise link isn't exactly broken, keen. Um, merchandise is a whole other issue right now, but that's, yeah. Uh, I could do a quick talk later on the merchandise situation if you want. <laughs> So my idea is that we do a test server for WordPress, build it up how we want it, move over the content we want, and then switch DNS and all that fun stuff. So that's the first project I want to pitch to people. The second project is the Book of Evergreen. Now, a lot of people don't know, but there is actually an Evergreen book out there. Oh, the graphic is covering up the link a little bit. But anyway, you can find it on our wiki. It's called Evergreen in Action. It was done back in 2013, and it was basically about how to use Evergreen back on 2.3. 2.4 was in development at the time. I am not looking to reinvent this book, by the way. Uh, but I thought I'd throw it in here as historical interest for those who are unaware of it. What I'm looking to do is something that builds more on this. A lot of people don't know this, but there is a history Git repo out there uh, where some folks, mostly Galen, Charlton, and a few other people have added commits with some information about the history of some evergreen organizations. I am not looking to redo this. What I'm looking to do is something more narrative. And... What I am envisioning is something that would be hosted on GitHub to lower the barriers to access as much as possible. Although I still imagine it may use some people who are more comfortable with Git to put content in for other folks. It would host graphics and text. And an initial first edition would feature 10 chapters, basically one per year for the first decade of Evergreen, which we're well onto our second decade now. And that what we would do is get a variety of stories from evergreen community that tell narratives, one per year. Now, a narrative could be an institution or an individual, but would look to tell a local story, but also touch on the bigger picture of what happened in evergreen in that year. So what I want people to do, of course, is for writing chapters, helping manage the repo, manage contributors, helping with editing and proofing, figuring out the layout and how we do that, whether it's an automated tool or we take the text and dump it into an actual layout system of some kind. Um, and right now I'm just looking to see if anyone's interested. And if we got enough people that were interested, we'd wanna start with just a handful to not make it unwieldy, then we might look at where we went from there. Eventually the output would be the content on Git, something that could be licensed and reusable, probably a Creative Commons by attribution and no timeline, just whenever it got done. Maybe even look at doing a second edition if the first is cool and happens with a PDF and web version outputs for people to be readable. The History GitHub is a different project, Blake. Um, the History GitHub is basically commits with dates and events. The, this is something I envision as having more of a narrative focus. Now, if you're interested in either of these, the Book of Evergreen or working on a website rebuild, obviously the website rebuild is a more practically oriented project oriented towards something that the community needs every day. The Book of Evergreen is more of a fun, fuzzy sort of thing, but from a historical standpoint, I think could be really interesting. Um, 
If you're interested in either of these, feel free to email me, rogan at evergreen-ils.org, or you know, hit me up any other way. All right. Those are my lightning talks for stumping for people. Are you in a position, Debbie? Possibly. I'm going to try again. Uh, and if not, Rogan, I'm going to send you the link. Um, and okay. Is that okay? All right. Sure. Let's try this again. Okay. To answer a question from Barb real quickly, there is a theme in place for WordPress. Um, it is has been tweaked and modified and adjusted, and that is part of what needs to be done with nuking, is replacing it with a more current theme that's better supported and to move away from undocumented tweaks in odd places. Okay. I'm assuming you still can't see my screen. I cannot. Okay. I just, just go ahead and drop me the link. Uh, where, how, are you sending it by email? Uh, no, I just did a direct message in Hopin. Okay. So many places for messages. <laughs> okay. You just tell me when to advance. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so I just want to talk briefly uh, about the documentation interest group. Um, and uh, I'm Debbie Lukenville. I'm the facilitator of the documentation interest group. Um, and we maintain and add and uh, edit all of the official documentation for the Evergreen community. Um, and we always need other people to help. Um, and I just want to point out, I found this um, picture and Creative Commons, it's public domain, and that boar is carrying a shovel, <laughs> which made me think of Dig, and I thought it was funny. Anyway, uh, and thank, many thanks to Lynn Floyd, who um, has done this presentation for many years and sent me her um, presentation slides to edit. So thanks, Lynn. Next slide, please. So what is DIG? Um, and we talk about DIG, you might see DIG on lists, and DIG stands for Documentation Interest Group. So as I said, we're the ones who maintain the official documentation. And I have here, um, and so you can uh, get the link to um, when the slides are posted later, but uh, that's our official wiki. Um, so you can find out information about us there. We also have monthly meetings, um, and every other meeting is different. So. <laughs> Um, on the first Thursday of odd months, we meet on IRC, and that's mostly a business meeting. And then on the first Thursday of even months, it's collaboration time on Zoom. So we um, are, you know, sharing information, having presentations, and just working on stuff together where we can share screens and everything. Um, so that is on. So our next one will be June 4th, I believe, the first Thursday in June, anyway. Uh, also, on Friday, we have a documentation hack fest. Um, so come to that, drop in. We'll have, you know, experienced dig folks. We'll be looking for, um, you know, new dig folks. We'll help you. <laughs> or, um, you know, very friendly. So please stop by uh, the hack fest and um, work on some documentation. And then also there's the link to the documentation discussion list. So you could subscribe to that. It's a pretty low... Um, we don't have a lot of discussion, <laughs> so no spamming. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just as a um, heads up, in the last year, um, we've had a lot of documentation commits and 27 unique committers, so that's awesome. Um, and some things, uh, you'll see some of these similar things in the annual report too, but we moved our documentation from just strict ASCII to um, the Antora platform. So it's much uh, friendlier for searching and um, also just better looking. So um, lots of stuff that DIG has been up to this year. It's been a very busy year, uh, but we still have things to do. Next slide, please. 
So here are things um, that. Oops. Did I go too far? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I double clicked. My mistake. Thanks. Um, so there's still lots of things to do. Here's a kind of a, a brief list of things, um, and it's a very general list, but um, it is, um, you know, basically anything documentation related. If you, um, you know, if there's something in Evergreen, it needs to be documented. So um, there are lots of ways to do that. Um, and one, uh, I just posted a picture here of the link that's on every page of the official docs. So you can just click on that and send an email to the DIG mailing list. Uh, next slide. And there are lots of ways that you can help. Um, so you can submit documentation in any format. So don't worry about, you know, I don't know ASCII or um, I'm not sure how, where to put this. Um, you know, go ahead and just send it to the discussion list and somebody will figure out how to it um, and put it in the official box. If you do know ASCII, uh, you can submit your documentation in GitHub. Um, and you can review, uh, Lynn and Blake did a pre-conference on this at this conference, and Jane Sandberg did um, a session yesterday also about um, the whole documentation process. So review those later, um, and that will give you a walkthrough from um, beginning to end of how to do uh, submit documentation. Come to the DIG meetings, and then the link I've got here is um, the documentation needs list. So you can just edit that and um, put your name next to something <laughs> and do it. So, nope, that's fine, go ahead. <laughs> this is the final, thank you to all the developers for release notes, because those are super helpful to all the documenters. And um, thank you to all the documenters who've done all of this hard work this year. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, does anybody else have something to present on? If not, I will be glad to share what I know about the merchandise situation. Okay, merchandise. Here is what has happened with the merchandise store. Uh, a few months ago, we set up a new store on a service called Redbubble. We were very happy with it. And then early one Saturday morning, I got a message from an Evergreen community member who said, uh, Rogan, the link is not going anywhere. What's going on? So I looked into it and found the store was down, uh, completely down, non-existent anymore. And in fact, our login was disabled to no longer be a valid account. I checked my email, uh, checked my spam, checked everything and I had no communication from them. I tried for about six weeks. I attempted calling them both in their San Francisco and Melbourne headquarters. They only have a recording in each, although the Melbourne one has a very nice Australian accent. I tried email, I tried Twitter, I tried their various support email chat lines and asked them to escalate issues and received a wall of silence from all of it with multiple attempts at each. Um, the only thing I got any form of response from was an automated form that sent me back a email saying uh, something to the effect of our account had been taken down for DMCA purposes and we could file an appeal with information that they never provided to us. I attempted to file said appeal anyway uh, with what I did have and ha that was about three weeks ago and have not received a response from that. So we are gonna to put together a timeline of these events and we will publish a post about it, recommending that other nonprofits may find Redbubble in a, inappropriate for their purposes also. The, we have discovered that there's a very, uh, a significant community of people who've been unhappy uh, with DMCA takedowns for reasons they don't understand. For our part, they list uh, three reasons for a store being taken down and for DMCA takedowns. Uh, one of those purposes being that there's malicious activity on the account, which we had relatively low numbers. I find that hard to believe. Two, that there is inappropriate adult content. We had two logos, one for the Evergreen 2021 conference and one for the Evergreen project. 
And then the third, that you are violating someone else's intellectual property. Uh, since we can't, do not have any communication from them, we don't know what their theoretical cause was. And if it was in fact DMCA, although their form emails are somewhat vague, then presumably it is for the logos violating someone's intellectual property, which uh, they don't. Uh, one of them is currently held by another organization that we are transferring assets from, but it is only held in steed for us. You know, uh, uh, that organization is meant to be a proxy and is transferring the asset back over to the Evergreen Project. Uh, and, and the other one is not held by that organization anyway. So that is the situation with the merchandise. Uh, yeah, uh, as Chris Burden says, we really don't have an appeal. Uh, when we signed up for it, we basically agreed that they can do whatever they want to our account that they please. And unfortunately, that is the universal boilerplate on services in this age of the web. So we will continue to evaluate uh, our options going forward in the future. We still want to provide merchandise, but yeah. Gina has a quick demo on Git versus VS Code. If anybody wants to see that, I say go ahead. All right, hopefully my audio doesn't do anything crazy. Um, hi, how, how's it going? Uh, so this is just really quick. Um, probably sharing the screen would be helpful. So we're gonna do that. Uh, the infinity tunnel. Um, yeah, so just real quick, uh, I started using VS Code a little bit more and in the new dev meeting, I did a, a demo on this. So if you're interested in watching a half hour of me rambling, uh, this would be the time to let me know. And I'll show some information. So uh, just really quick here, um, on VS Code, if you, you can either hit the control back tick button or you can just do a, a quick drag up from the bottom. And this actually moved from the last time that I did this, but if you click on this arrow here, there's a git bash terminal. So you could do just all your git bash stuff on here. So it's, um, you know, pretty simple. You just run everything the same. Uh, I don't think I had to do anything else to set this up. Uh, VS Code has some pretty good git stuff regardless. So I just had the regular thing installed. Um, the git lens extension, I would also uh, recommend. I don't know too much about it because I've just been fine with the Git that's been installed in uh, VS Code. Uh, but if you just hover over like bits of code in here, it gives you information over like, you know, who the user was who submitted a change and so forth. And lastly, there is um, this icon on the left side and that gives you some information about Git. So logs all your commits here, uh, branch information. You could even do um, a diff file Trying to do I have the scroll actually. So if I saw this, um, it'll just bring up a diff file here and so forth. But yeah, just something uh, really quick to show you. Um, I've been an advocate for VS Code. I know Rogan uses it too. So feel free to use that. So thank you.